have new details about the investigation into the death of Sandra Birchmore. She's the young woman who was allegedly groomed by three Stoughton police officers. Her death was ruled a suicide, but her estate filed a wrongful death lawsuit. NBC 10's Eli Rosenberg live in Dedham after attending the civil hearing in Birchmore's case. Eli, what did you learn? Yeah, this was a civil hearing tied to the wrongful death lawsuit filed by Sandra Birchmore's estate against those three officers and the town of Stoughton. But within that civil hearing, new details about the criminal investigation also playing out. I just want Sandra Birchmore to get justice for herself and the child that she was carrying. In recent weeks, the justice for Sandra Birchmore's social media accounts exploding in popularity. The engagement has been amazing and people are upset, rightfully so. For the record, Colin. But now new details on where things stand surrounding the investigation into Birchmore's death. There is an ongoing uh, investigation. It continues to be very active. Birchmore died in February 2021. Her death ruled a suicide. When she died, she was three months pregnant. Our investigation discovered that a year later, the Stoughton police chief saying a lengthy investigation found three former officers had an inappropriate sexual relationship with Birchmore, with one of those relationships starting when Birchmore was underage. The Boston Globe reporting last month, Birchmore's family hired a prominent forensic pathologist who concluded her death was a homicide. That is significant extremely significant. Now lawyers representing the officers suing the attorney general's office, asking it to release files as it prepares to fight a civil wrongful death suit filed by Birchmore's estate. My client has one opportunity to prove his innocence here, Your Honor. To the extent that there is a homicide investigation uh, taking place that, you know, the attorney general's office is not handling, it would not uh, do anything to interfere with, with an ongoing homicide investigation. So the hearing lasted about 40 minutes, no ruling. Instead, the judge asked the attorney general's office to provide some more details about the different documents it has, the judge giving the AG's office 30 days to do so. Ivan Dedham, Eli Rosenberg, NBC10, Boston. Hello, hello. Welcome to Crime in Court. My name is Heather, and you guys just watched a very short New segment. It was a little bit older, but it was more recent of what was going on in the Sandra Birchmore case, at least um, when the news was covering it. So uh, as we've gone through this case, this is the the next episode in my Tragic Death of Sandra Birchmore series. And we are talking about now we're going to be talking about the estate of Sandra Birchmore, who is in a civil in civil litigation with several people and um we're going to read some court documents today about that so darnell or darlene sorry darlene smith as the personal representative of the estate of sandra birchmore i believe darlene is sandra's aunt so this is um sandra birchmore's aunt on behalf of sandra birchmore and that is the plaintiff, obviously, versus Matthew Farwell, William Farwell, and Robert Devine. Those are the three Stoughton officers that we know of that had inappropriate relations with Sandra. Matthew, we know, had inappropriate relations with her when she was underage. She was 15 at the time when their, that, we cont- that we know of when their relationship evolved into something physical. She knew these officers by going into this Explorers program because she was so excited about law enforcement and she really wanted, you know, she aspired to be one. She really admired law enforcement. So she joins this Youth Explorers program to learn the ways of law enforcement so she could maybe one day have a career in it. Well, while there, she joined when she was about 13 years old. So while there, she met Matthew Farwell and William Farwell, who were the instructors of this of these courses, these um, whatever projects and exercises that they do, and also Robert Devine, who was the captain of the entire Explorers program, and he's the one that brought in Matthew and William to teach for him for this program. So um, those are the three officers, and that's how uh, this case is. Uh, that's how they're all related. So they were all officers of the town of Stoughton. So that is why the town of Stoughton and the Stoughton Police Department are also on this lawsuit. So this is one of the more recent um, updates regarding the uh, 
this particular civil suit because as you'll see, there have been many, many updates to it. They've been working and investigating and learning more. And as they do, they add more to this complaint. So um, we're going to go from there. So again, this is Darlene Smith on behalf of Sandra Birchmore versus the officers, the town of Stoughton and the uh, Stoughton PD. Complaint and demand for jury trial nature of action. This is an action brought by the plaintiff Darlene Smith as the personal representative of the estate of Sandra Birchmore herein, herein after referred to as plaintiff for wrongful homicide, negligence, negligent supervision, negligent retention, pain and suffering, and emotional stress as against the defendants Matthew Farwell, William Farwell, Robert Devine, the town of Stoughton, and the Stoughton Police Department herein after referred to collectively as defendants, for claims arising out of an ongoing scheme of grooming Sandra Birchmore, herein after referred to as decedent or Ms. Birchmore, and misconduct that ultimately led to the loss of Ms. Birchmore's life on February 4th, 2021. Actually, she was found on February 4th, but it is believed that she lost her life on the 1st. After the, after the defendants, Matthew and William and Robert, uh, here and after collectively the officers, undertook to engage in appropriate relationships with the decedent, who was a minor, when the intimate relationships were initiated. So this claims that all three of them were. We know from the internal investigations that we read through that Matthew Farwell admitted to having relations with Sandra when she was 15, which the legal age of consent there is 16. So there's that. So why he didn't get charges brought up upon him, I don't know. He has been decertified as an officer. Uh, Matthew, the the one who's the fa the alleged father of Sandra's baby and the one who uh, went to her apartment that night and we have it on video. So that's Matthew. He's been decertified. William and Robert still are going through the process. They are fighting the decertification process. Matthew agreed to it. He was like, okay, because they probably had him on other things. And it was pro well, I, I shouldn't speculate, but whatever. He agreed to it. And um, there we have uh, Matthew agreeing to the misconduct however um like i said no charges were brought upon him and uh he went willingly which says something in my opinion william farwell and robert devine are still fighting it i think they think that they don't have proof that the relationship started before she was 16 i think maybe um, so they're still fighting it with the post commission who is in charge of their certification all righty. Um, did I finish that sentence? I feel like I didn't. She was a minor. They were abusing her trust and adoration of law enforcement, which, through their inappropriate and undue influence, ultimately led to her allegedly taking her own life. So, in this claim, there's the estate still is saying you know, if she did take her own life, that though their actions led to that. The things that those officers did to her would have led her to take that action. So even if it's a homicide or uh, ruled by her own hands, they still believe that it, these officers are uh, to blame. Plaintiff brings this action against the town of Stoughton, here and after referred to as Stoughton, and the Stoughton Police Department herein, at, herein after referred to as PD for claims arising from the conduct of its officers and its negligence in its supervision of said officers over the duration of the Stoughton Police Explorers Program and thereafter. Jurisdiction and Venue The Norfolk Superior Court has jurisdiction over the claims asserted herein pursuant to MGL 212 
three. I don't know how to say any of that gobbledygook. So sorry. <laughs> to me, it's just gobbledygook. To a lawyer, makes perfect sense. I'm sure like something means statue. I have no idea what that thing is called. That thing. What is that called? Anybody who's in law that knows that symbol? <laughs> Anyways, sorry. Didn't mean to uh, get distracted there. All right, so venue is proper in Norfolk County pursuant to this particular statute. Uh, but this one's 223, whatever. All right, so number three, parties. Uh, the estate of Sandra Birchmore is a probate estate docket ending in 8-9, for which Darlene Smith of 40 Hull... Oh, I don't want to dox her shit. ...was appointed as personal representative on July 12th, 2021. Hope it didn't you, Darlene. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> Defendant Matthew Farr. I mean, it's public and their addresses are all here and not redacted. So I apologize. Defendant Matthew Farwell, here and after M. Um, Farwell, is an individual residing in Northeastern Massachusetts. Defendant William Farwell, here and after W. Farwell, is residing in Stoughton. Defendant Robert Devine, also Stoughton. Defendant, Stoughton, uh, Defendant Stoughton Police Department is a municipal agency located at 26 Rose Street, Stoughton, Mass. Defendant Town of Stoughton is municipality located in Norfolk County with its mu municipal building located at 10 Pearl Street, Stoughton, Massachusetts. Here are the facts of the case. On February 4th, 2021, the Canton Police Department responded to a welfare check at the de decedent's apartment. So Canton PD arrives at Sandra Birchmore's apartment located in Canton. Uh, and many familiar names might be in here. Or at least, you know, they were in the police reports. Uh, Sergeant Michael Link was one of the responding officers. I believe Kevin Albert who is the brother of Brian Albert in the John O'Keefe, Karen Reed case. So it was during the welfare check that the body of the decedent was discovered and she was pronounced dead at the scene by responding paramedics. At the time, upon information and belief, Ms. Birchmore was three months pregnant with her first child, allegedly, by one of the officers. And I want to bring that up because the... ME, the medical examiner for the Norfolk District Attorney's Office, is the one that did the autopsy on Sandra, and they never tested the DNA of the baby, which baffles my mind. How could you not? Like, number one suspect is the father of that baby. Why? Anyways, I think they, I think I know why. I think they tried to hide misconduct by the police officers so that's my opinion and i'm sticking to it but anyway so it said the me said um or the me decided rather made the decision not to take dna sample from the baby to find out the other half of the dna that that baby possessed which could give us a lead as to who might have done something to harm sandra but no they just take it as eh, she's pregnant whatever who cares we don't need to know the father of the baby what in any normal autopsy they would have done a dna test and to top it all off guess who refused to give a DNA sample. Oh yeah, that's right, Matthew Farwell. So just those two things alone are so suspect to me. The Emmy, who we know Michael Proctor tried to uh, change her opinions on things. She didn't in that case, but she did write on something that was really an inappropriate, inappropriate. Um, words escape me sometimes. Uh, she wrote that it was not from a fight, <laughs> which you don't write what something is not from. Usually to, you you can't rule one specific thing out like that. It was so bizarre. 
So anyways, she was pressured by Michael Proctor to write that in John O'Keefe's autopsy. What makes you think that the, I don't know if it was the same medical examiner, mind you, this happened a year prior, so it could have been somebody else, but, or they might have multiple medical examiners, but for whatever reason, the medical examiner who examined Sandra Birchmore did not test the baby's DNA. Wouldn't have helped because Matthew Farwell didn't give his DNA. But those are things that we maybe should have investigated, don't you think? Anyways, it's just, it, it makes me so angry because they didn't do their due diligence in investigating. And I don't like the power of the state coming at you when people have very little recourse and resources to fight back against the state and in this case it's you know uh, Darlene Smith is fighting the state <laughs> and the officers in uh, that were she entrusted to well not necessarily her but that the officers that many people entrusted their kids to let's say that all right so uh number eight Ms. Birchmore's death was the culmination of a near decade long scheme of grooming and repeated SAs from a young age by certain police officers employed by the PD. And it is defined down here grooming is a method used by officers that involves building trust with a child and the adults around a child in an effort to gain access to and time alone with him or her. In extreme cases, offenders may use threats and physical force to SA or just outright a a child physically mentally emotionally however they feel fit um more common though are subtle approaches designed to build relationships with families the offender may assume a caring role befriend the child or even exploit their position of trust and authority to groom the child and or the child's family so remember Sandra Birchmore's mother wrote that letter to uh, Robert Devine saying, thank you so much for all you do for Sandra and for all you've done to help her and the family and your support and blah, blah, blah. Little did she know what he was doing with her and allowing his officers to do things to her. These individuals intentionally build relationships with the adults around and seek uh, around a child or seek out a child who is less supervised by adults in his or her life, which is also common. Uh, Sandra did not have a father around that I know of. I don't know what happened to her dad, but her, she was being raised by her mom, her grandma. She lost both of them in a short period of time in the same year. And um, I mean, that's a recipe for a predator to, uh, Poop right in. Dad's not around. Mom might be working all the time. Uh, let's, you know, get in close with this family and act like I'm helping them. I'm overseeing their kid while they're gone. They don't have to worry. So gross. It's like, ugh. Thinking about it makes me sick. All right. Um, this increases the likelihood. That the offender's time with the child is welcomed and encouraged. Again, if the mom encourages time with those individuals or a parent is like, oh, we really like that Robert Devine. He's such a good influence on you. You know, that gets embedded in her thoughts and her process. Her, you know, she processes that information and she knows like, hey, it's okay. Mom's got the approval for this person. So they're not going to leave me in a bad way usually is like kind of how you would logically think <laughs> you wouldn't just you you would think you can trust them anyways all right so nine the decedent from her youth suffered from a difficult home life she struggled as a child with the loss of her grandmother and mother as she grew up dealt with some significant mental and emotional problems for which she sought psychological care from adolescence into adulthood Despite these issues, Ms. Birchmore deeply respected authority figures, most notably police officers. 
As a result of this admiration, she joined the Stoughton Police Department Explorers Program, herein after referred to as the program, in her early teenage years. It was through this program that the decedent was introduced to defendants Divine and M and W Farwell. And hold on one second, I gotta check on my dog. It's hot out and she's sunbathing, and I just want to make sure that she can come inside. So hold on one second. Sorry right, about that. We're all good. All right, so ten. The defendant Divine was the head of the program, and the defendants M. Farwell and his brother W. Farwell both worked within the program in their individual capacities as officers and educators. M. Farwell was seen on video surveillance at Ms. Birchmore's apartment approximately four days prior to the discovery of her body and, upon information and belief, was the last person to see Ms. Birchmore alive. It was later revealed by the PD internal investigation report that M. Farwell had known the decedent since she was 13. From her participation in the program, 13 is young. Just reminding you all, 13 is very young. And she also looked super young and she was super tiny and petite. She looked very young for her age, so it just makes it even more disgusting. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. from her participation in the program and soon thereafter began a physical relationship with her when she turned 15 or when she was 15. The investigation revealed that M. Farwell had a continuous physical relationship with Ms. Birchmore that started while she was still a minor. The same investigation determined that M. Farwell later used some type of location sharing application to track and determine Ms. Birchmore's location. M. Farwell used some type of location sharing application to track and determine Ms. Birchmore's location. So this creep who started grooming her at 13 and was having physical relationships with her at the age of 15 while he was in his 20s, late 20s, I think it was 27 or something like that. Um, yeah. Um, I, I forgot what I was going to say. I was going somewhere with that. I forgot it happens on like every single stream I do. I forget something. Because then my, like, my thoughts are just rolling as I go along. Anyways, so uh, 13, 15, oh. So she was 13 when he groomed her, 15 when he started physical relationships with her, and now we find out that he was tracking her with like some type, some type of GPS tracker just to keep score on where she was. So he was treating her like his property, like he had a right to know where she was at all times. Disgusting. PD internal investigation determined by a preponderance of the evidence that defendants W. Farwell and Devine had similar physical relationships with Birchmore and that both had repeated contacts with the decedent while on duty. Um, physical intimate contact happened in those con in those instances while on duty in their squad cars wherever they didn't care they were very blatant and open with it so about time they got caught all right so that same investigation determined that not only did all three of the officers have physical relationships with ms birchmore but the divine effectively established the farwells as his understudies in using his position or their position and influence while on duty to engage in inappropriate behaviors with minors during the program. It was this ongoing pattern of abuse and behavior over the near decades long relationship that created and exacerbated the under the underlying trauma, mental and emotional stress suffered by Ms. Birchmore. We know now the effects of this. I did an episode prior to this where we talk about the warning signs of predatory behavior, but also we look at the long-term effects 
that the psychological effects that it can have on someone who is um, in a similar who finds themselves in a similar situation as Birchmore uh, when they were kids. So um, all these things, underlying trauma, mental uh, mental illness can come from being abused as a young child, emotional distress, not being able to regulate your emotions. Not um, th there was that talk always about um, how she was in a uh, she was always telling people everything like almost like she had inappropriate boundaries. She didn't know what was right and what wasn't. She would just tell people, "Hey, I'm pregnant," and like tell personal stuff to people. She was very open about her thoughts. She was like an open book, and she told people she was in a relationship with these guys. Also, um, so yeah, that but what I meant was she had this, she didn't have any idea of what normal healthy boundaries are because of the trauma and everything that was done to her by divine and far, the farwell twin brothers. All right. So emotional distress that ultimately led her to, um, it overwhelmed her will to live is what they're saying. And in turn caused her death. So these, traumatic feeling these traumatic experiences that she went through the emotional distress the mental distress that it's caused her it was too much for her she couldn't bear to live anymore is what they're saying so each count contained herein is derivative of the sa of the decedent as a minor while she was participating in the program so that's a big difference that's a big she was a minor during the program here so all these things alleged are when she was a minor all right so count one wrongful death plaintiff's estate versus defendants m farwell william farwell and divine so just the officers here versus the, the estate Plaintiff restates and incorporates by reference paragraphs 1 through 14 as if fully set forth herein. On February 4th, 2021, Ms. Birchmore was found to be deceased following a welfare check by police. The last person to have seen the decedent alive several days prior was M. Farwell, who was seen on video surveillance at Ms. Birchmore's apartment approximately four days prior to the discovery of her body. And around the same time when her phone stopped, when she stopped responding to people on her phone, I should say. Upon information and belief, was the last person to see Birchmore alive. And if she didn't take her own life, who did? If he's the last person alive to see her, or last person to see her alive. All right, so it was later revealed by the PD internal investigation report that M. Farwell had known the decedent since age 13 and began a continuous physical relationship with her beginning at age 15 while she was still a minor and was using some type of location sharing application to track and determine her location. This just baffles me. The nerve the bravado, the ego on these cops that think I can just track her. <laughs> wow. Okay. Anyways, the PD, I'm still in shock about it. <laughs> and I read it five minutes ago. All right. So the PD internal investigation also determined by a preponderance of the evidence, the defendants W. Farwell and Devine had similar physical relationships with Miss Birchmore and they both had repeated contacts with the defendant while they were on duty. The same investigation determined that not only did all three of the officers have physical relationships with Ms. Birchmore, but that Divine effectively established the Farwells as his understudies in using their position and influence to engage in inappropriate behaviors with minors during the program and with decedents while on duty. Um, so they're saying basically William, uh, William, uh, Divine, uh, Robert Divine, if I could get the words out, Robert Divine was using Farwell and, uh, using the Farwell brothers as an extension of him, like to 
um, to groom them and to do these inappropriate things with them. So he allowed it. 21, it was this ongoing pattern of grooming, abuse, and inappropriate behavior by Divine Far M. and W. Farwell over the near decade long relationship during the duration of the program and beyond, beginning when Ms. Birchmore was a minor, that created and exacerbated the underlying trauma, mental, and emotional distress suffered by Ms. Birchmore and subverted her appreciation and adoration for authority figures namely the officers that she idolized through a campaign of inappropriate and undue influence resulting from the officer's actions as such authority figures. They took advantage of her being so um, adoring of authority figures, and they took advantage of that. They, They shattered her innocence. They shattered that trust, that adoration that she should should have for law enforcement law enforcement should be admired the ones that are doing their job and doing it effectively and appropriately and not putting wrongful people behind bars and or wrongfully putting people behind bars and um getting mes to change their terminations things like that (laughs) you don't want your cops to do that All right, so although the decedent had underlying mental health issues, it was this ongoing, years-long pattern of grooming, abuse, and inappropriate physical behavior by Divine M. Farwell and W. Farwell that exacerbated Ms. Birchmore's mental health and was the underlying trauma that ultimately overwhelmed the decedent's will to live and in turn caused her to take her own life. Or she didn't take her own life and somebody did. The defendants intentionally caused harmful and offensive acts, uh, contact, physical contacts with Ms. Birchmore, a minor at the time, and it was those offensive contacts that continued well after her participation in the program, which directly resulted in her loss of life. The officers knew of the offensive nature of their contact with the decedent, especially when she was a minor. I mean, cops should know that these things that they're doing are illegal. Of all the people in the world, they should know. They're supposed to be putting people like that away, but yet they're the ones perpetrating the crime. Anyway, so officers knew of the offensive nature of their contact with the decedent, especially when she was a minor, and all three officers acted willfully and wantonly with the intent to conduct such physical contact. They intended it to being an intimate, physical, adult-type relationship. As the result of the grooming, abuse, and inappropriate contact, the decedent suffered significant damages due to continuous mental and emotional abuse and trauma that ultimately led to her alleged self-deletion. This continuous pattern of grooming, inappropriate behavior, and contact over many years was wanton and reckless and ultimately became Ms. Birchmore's will to live, which ultimately overcame, sorry, which ultimately overcame Ms. Birchmore's will to live and resulted in her alleged self-deletion. Wherefore, and we're not done, so don't go anywhere because this is just, that's just, sorry, I gotta adjust, my hips are hurting. My everything's hurting. All right, so wherefore, The plaintiff prays that judgment be entered against W. Farwell, M. Farwell, and Divine for wrongful loss of life in an amount that will fairly and adequately compensate for the loss of Ms. Birchmore's life and all other damages recoverable together with interest and costs and such other relief as the Honorable Court deems appropriate. That's just one count. Count two, negligence, Uh, plaintiff's estate versus, again, the officers. The plaintiff restates and incorporates by references paragraph 1 through 26 as if fully set forth herein. In addition, the plaintiff states that this count two is derivative of count one and is derivative of the SA of the defendant as a minor while she was uh, participating in the program. 
M. Farwell, W. Farwell, and Divine owed Ms. Birchmore and the other members of the program a duty to protect this vulnerable class of minors. I'm going to highlight that. A duty to protect this vulnerable class of minors from the very sort of abuse and grooming behavior that was being conducted by the officers. That's what I just said. They're supposed to be the ones stopping people doing these things, not the ones doing it, which just makes it all that more offensive. Number 29, M. Farwell, W. Farwell, and Divine breached that duty by undertaking their inappropriate actions against Ms. Birchmore. Further, uh, more, moreover, these defendants, due to their position as officers and educators within the program, held a special relationship with Ms. Birchmore and other children in the program. This special relationship also created a duty to Ms. Birchmore and the rest of the children within the program. So she had, they had not only a duty to all the individuals in that class, but they, I mean, her in, in particular too. They all had, a, because of the educator-student relationship, they should have, he, he owed her a, another duty. Besides just being the sworn in officer to protect, you're also there to maintain a teacher student relationship and they they did not do that obviously so um that duty was also breached all right so it was this willful and wanton breach of duty trust and confidence of the part of m farwell w farwell and divine that ultimately led to the death of miss birchmore wherefore the plaintiff prays that judgment be entered against the defendants M. Farwell, W. Farwell, and Divine for negligence here under in an amount that will fairly, and then it cuts off, but that's okay because we've got more. So this is, I apologize for that, but it does just cut off. So this is, they kept adding to it. So we just got to find where they left off which was count two. So count two. Where do we leave off? Uh, we'll fairly and adequately compensate for all other damages recoverable together with interest, cost, and such other relief as this honorable court deems appropriate. Um, so the now we're going further in time and they've added on to this more counts. So now we've got count three negligence versus defendant divine. So this is just divine. Uh, that probably should say plaintiff, not negligence, but whatever. <laughs> um, the plaintiff re restates and incorporates by reference paragraphs one through 24 as if fully set forth herein. Divine, through his position as the head of the program, owed a duty to care of the to the decedent and the rest of the explorers due to the special relationship created by the position. So he owed another duty of care just for this simple fact that he was the head of the program. So that's three strikes, Robert Divine, you're out. <laughs> The court has held that while the public duty rule limits liability of governmental units, a special relationship such as that special relationship with a child participating in the program creates an elevated duty to protect those children rather than the public at large. Divine, as the head of the program, breached this duty to Ms. Birchmore by failing to protect her from the conduct of the Farwells. So as the head of the program, he had a duty to protect her from other instructors. But no, he was teaching his instructors the ways of grooming. At least that's he was using them as another extension of him to groom the kids or whatever. He was not um, dealing with the problem. He was allowing it to happen. All right, so Divine, the head of the program breached this duty to Ms. Birchmore by failing to protect her from the conduct of the Farwells, despite his knowledge as to the misconduct. So he had knowledge 
despite his knowledge as to the misconduct that was occurring at the time. So, what do you say to that, Robert Devine? I mean, I don't know what, what the proof is that they, that he knew, but he probably knew because he was he was making them his loyal subjects, the Farwell brothers. All right, number 29. By failing to protect the decedent, Divine, Divine breached such special duty, causing her damage and ultimately contributing to her loss of life. Wherefore, the plaintiff prays that judgment be entered against the defendant, Divine, for negligence in an amount that will fairly and adequately compensate for the loss, pain, and suffering, and all other damages recoverable here under, together with interest, cost, and such other relief as the Honorable Court deems appropriate. Moving on to count four. Negligent hiring versus, oh, I guess maybe they are trying to say negligent hiring versus Stoughton PD. So now we're talking just the PD, the officers, no more. So the the plaintiff restates and incorporates by reference paragraph 1 through 29, and if fully set forth herein. Under Massachusetts law, employers who whose employees are brought into contact with members of the public have a duty to exercise reasonable care in the selection and retention of their employees. Exercise reasonable care. They knew that the Farwell brothers had some um, issues prior to even becoming cops. They were arrested for pretending to be cops. So then, then one day they become cops. The they police apparently don't mind if you have on your record that you impersonated them which is a crime by the way you're not supposed to impersonate a cop but they were impersonating cops and obviously the cops have their records and yet they still hired them as cops oh make that make sense i don't even i can't go there right now i can't make my mind think about that sorry i have a walmart order that's ready my phone keeps going off um an Employer's knowledge of past acts of impropriety, violence, or disorder on the part of the employee applicant is generally sufficient to forewarn the employer who selects or retains the employee that the employee may commit such an assault during their employment. So, past acts of impropriety, violence, and disorder. They had some record. Stoughton and the PD had knowledge of the propensities and history of both M. Farwell and W. Farwell due to the requisite rigorous nature of the background checks prior to becoming a police officer, right? I mean, you do a background check, so you still hired them. Doton, the PD, and Devine, who served on the hiring committee for M. Farwell and as the supervisor of the program, knew or should have known of the instances of misconduct on the part of the Farwells, both before and during their employment. So even during their employment, they were, were accused of misconduct. Such conduct, including both M. Farwell and W. Farwell, allegedly impersonating police officers and pulling over cars as teenagers exercising an abuse of the trust of authority that accompanies the role of police officers. Although Devine had previously denied any such knowledge of that behavior as per the PD investigation report. However, such a lack of knowledge as described by the same report would be impossible as Devine was the head of the program, was familiar with both M. Farwell and W. Farwell, and sat on the hiring board for M. Farwell. Additionally, as the investigative report states, the prior acts, including the impersonation of police officers by both M. Farwell and W. Farwell, were widely known throughout the department. So you can't claim ignorance because the whole department knew. So there's that. And yet, you still hired him to be 
not just officers, but off, uh, officers that oversee young kids. As a res- I mean, not that the two are related or anything, but I mean, you hire them in the first place and then you put them in charge of some vulnerable citizens. That's all I'm saying. I wouldn't want to trust him. All right, so as a result, both the PD and Stoughton had a duty to determine the extent of the prior misconduct by M. Farwell and W. Farwell and either failed to do so or ignored such prior misconduct. Yeah, you either ignored it completely or you failed to find it. You failed to look for it. Upon learning of the misconduct, both by M and W. Farwell, Divine, both prior to and over the duration of the program, and by continuing to not only operate the program, but retaining both M. Farwell and William Farwell and Divine, the town and the PD were negligent. Here, here, I agree. This negligence on the part of Stoughton and the PD led to the harm and ultimately contributed to the loss of Miss Birchmore's life. Wherefore, the plaintiff prays that judgment be entered against the defendant, Stoughton, and the PD for negligence in an amount that will fairly and adequately compensate for the loss of Miss Birchmore's life and all other damages recoverable together with interest, costs, and such other relief as this honorable court deems appropriate. We are now on page are we on? Okay, we're doing good. This is going to be, obviously, you know, we're doing two parts as the thumbnail says so we're almost done with this part i just was checking to see we're on page 16 so we're moving along we're not reading this whole document it's like 300 pages long but we're reading the key complaints the points that um darlene smith the estate for sandra birchmore what they are claiming are the reasons why they are owed some kind of compensation so the plaintiff re- oh, next we're on count four five sorry count five negligent supervision versus the stoughton pd the plaintiff restates and alleges and realleges paragraphs one through 37 and if fully set forth herein stoughton and the pd owed the decedent a duty of care to protect her from the abuse and inappropriate conduct suffered by the hands of both M. Farwell, W. Farwell, and Divine. It was by virtue of their employment as officers with PD that the inappropriate contact with Birchmore was facilitated. Yes, they used their power, their position. Through the program, Stoughton and the PD provided M. and W. Farwell and Divine access to the highly vulnerable population of minors, including Miss Birchmore. That's what I'm saying. It's a population of minors who are easily um, easily molded, manipulated. They can be easily lied to. You know, I mean, if you're a predator or something of that nature, you would be very happy to be around <laughs> these minors. People who are predators usually are you find them in some kind of area where kids are present like the boy scouts of america which actually started this explorers program uh so there's that (laughs) anyways um as a result stoughton and the pd had a duty of care to protect these children from the foreseeable harms which could be inflicted by its employees Stoughton and the PD breached this duty by failing to protect the decedent from the harm the harms suffered over the duration of the program and thereafter. Wherefore, the plaintiff prays that judgment be entered against the defendants Stoughton and the PD for negligence in an amount that will fairly and adequately compensate for the loss of Miss Birchmore's life and all other damages recoverable together with interest, costs, and such other relief as this honorable court deems appropriate. Count number six. Assault and battery versus defendants M M and W. Farwell and Divine. The plaintiff restates and incorporates the paragraphs above 
The defendant, M. Farwell, W. Farwell, and Devine intentionally caused harm and offensive contacts with Ms. Birchmore, a minor at the time, and that contact with the plaintiff, which continued after her participation in the program, directly resulted in the loss of Ms. Birchmore's life. The officers knew of the offensive nature of their contact with the, defend- the, with the decedent, who, when such contact was originally initiated, was a minor, and all three officers acted willfully and wantonly with the intent to conduct such physical adult acts. As a result of that contact, the decedent suffered significant damages due to continuous mental and emotional abuse and trauma, as well as being used as a um, conquest or something for them, or whatever sick fantasies that they had. And it ultimately led to her alleged, alleged self-deletion. Because at this point in time now, we're starting to believe she didn't take her own life, I think. I mean, I don't think that they thought that from the beginning. But as we're moving forward in time, because this was a new filing. we The first filing was in December of 2022. This one's from January 2023. So we're, you know, um, adding more and more to the case when information comes out. All right, so wherefore, the plaintiff prays that judgment be entered against the defendants, Divine M. Farwell and W. Farwell for S.A. and Battery in an amount that will fairly and adequately compensate the plaintiff's loss, pain, and suffering, and all other damages recoverable together with interest, costs, and such other relief as the Honorable Court deems appropriate. All right, we're getting there. All right, so count seven, negligent infliction of emotional distress versus defendants M. and W. Farwell and Divine Stoughton and the PD. The plaintiff restates and incorporates by reference paragraphs one through 47. All defendants were negligent and contributed to the loss of Ms. Birchmore's life. As a result, Ms. Birchmore suffered significant emotional distress caused by the negligence of the defendants. Due to the significant emotional distress suffered by the family, Ms. Birchmore, the family of Ms. Birchmore, have suffered significant harm and loss. And that's a good point, too, because it's not just Birchmore, but it's the family of which I don't know why I did it like a dummy there. It's also the family of Ms. Birchmore who is suffering. They're the ones left to suffer without Sandra in their lives. And they deal with the brunt of it. Sandra's gone and she's no longer in pain. She's in a better place and she's not being hurt anymore by those stupid officers. It's the family that's still on earth, that still has these earthly feelings like grief and sadness and they're the ones that are suffering. So, yes, I think, you know, this uh, this isn't a very appropriate lawsuit, and I think they have a lot of merit. Wherefore, the plaintiff demands judgment and damages against the defendants in a sum to be determined at trial. And they want to go to trial. That's the thing. The, you know, people want to probably settle it and not deal with whatever public um whatever publicity comes out from it whatever kind of things can be available to the public if it goes to trial the town of stoughton pd they the defendants definitely don't want all that out they don't want their misconduct out there so they they would probably try to settle if they could is my thought process here so we might see some settling before um this ever does go to trial but it would be interesting to see this go to trial because um i fully believe that they did contribute to her loss of life all right so next is count eight negligent infliction of emotional distress sandra birchmore versus defendants m and w farwell divine stoughton and pd 
The plaintiff restates and realleges all of the above. <laughs> the defendants each fail to protect the decedent from the misconduct as alleged herein. As a result of the above misconduct, Ms. Birchmore suffered significant trauma and emotional distress caused by the negligence of the defendants during her lifetime, during a decade-long journey of grooming and essaying her. I can't even imagine what she was going through mentally. Such significant emotional distress caused her to seek additional mental and emotional psychological help as it exacerbated her underlying mental and emotional issues. This emotional distress rose to such a level that it ultimately overcame Ms. Birchmore's ability to cope with life and will to live and led to her allegedly taking her own life. Now, remember at this point, they didn't have the forensic pathologist's new evaluation stating that he believes that this was a homicide and not taken, you know, that Sandra didn't take her own life. So at this point in these documents, they're still considering it a, um, Or not considering it. Did I just skip a page? Where was I? Totally just lost where I was. Hold on one second. Found it. Okay, allegedly. And that's what I was saying too was that it's at this point they're still saying allegedly she took her own life. But in reality, they don't believe that. And that's what Dr. Baden's forensic um, evaluation was for was to um, determine if it was uh, taken if she took her own life or if it was homicide and that is they found homicide so now if they reopen the case if the AG's office opens the case that would be something and they're the only ones that probably could I think they did say that there is an ongoing case right now so uh, perhaps they might change the um, manner of death to um, homicide. Anyways, all right, so understand under the above circumstances, any minor would have suffered similar emotional distress after a 10-year period of essay and mistreatment exacerbating Ms. Birchmore's underlying psychological issues. Wherefore, the plaintiff demands judgment and damages against the defendant's in a sum to be determined at trial. Number nine, uh, whatever this statute is, violation versus W.M. Farwell, I mean, <laughs> M. Farwell, W. Farwell, R. Divine, and Stoughton, P.D. The plaintiff restates and realleges everything above. At all times relevant here, too, the officers were police officers employed by the town of Stoughton. Throughout the relevant period of time in which the abuse took place, the officers were operating under the color of law. So they're acting as law enforcement doing these heinous crimes. The abuse, grooming, and SA all took place and was facilitated uh, sorry okay and was facilitated by virtue of the officer's position as police officers and educators within the program throughout the duration the officers acted under the authorization by the government within the program therefore town of stoughton and the pd should be responsible as well and they were abusing their power within both the program and as police officers the court has held previously in Almand versus DeKalb County, the R and SA by state actors and officials can violate the Constitution and serve as the basis for a 1983 claim. The officer's essay of Ms. Birchmore as a minor all occurred within the officers operated while the officers all operated under the color of law and in abuse of their positions given to them by the town of Stoughton. There exists a clear nexus between the officers' official duties as police officers and educators within the program and their inappropriate and 
their inappropriate physical contact with Ms. Birchmore over the duration of the program and continuing thereafter. Wherefore, we ask for um, damages, sorry, judgment and damages. I could read it all. And I am going to stop there and we're going to pick back up where we left off. That's, I don't need to find it, but we'll stop here and um, there's still a little bit more. Hold on one sec. Sorry about that. Yeah, we're going to stop here. I definitely have, um, I just wanted to make sure that I had enough for part two. And um, I do. So we're going to uh, stop here and part two will pick up kind of where we left off. The um, That particular motion is over, but we have other motions that we're going to read through in this document. So anyways, that's a good stopping point. And I will see you guys in the next one. Please don't forget to... Uh, we got garbage day. Sorry, it's loud. Um, so on that note, thanks for watching. Hit the like button on your way out. Take care, guys. Bye now.